Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be the long-awaited anniversary ticket recommendation video. Now, I know it took me a while to get this video out. If you, this ticket was released, I believe, March 10th. But however, it lasting all the way to April 1st made me kind of delay it because I felt a lot of players should have not ticketed so early thanks to the ongoing lottery and the uh, roulette currently going on. Reason being that you can randomly get any of the current grand characters in the game from the lottery ticket. Not to mention we did have a flash gala, which you had a chance of getting the grand characters in as well. So if you take it a grand unit, you do have a chance of getting a dupe, which would be very unfortunate for any player who take it early. As for the seasonal units, currently we have the summer units in the banner. And you do have a chance of rolling them at any point. That's why I kind of decided to wait based on these reasons alone. Now, if you're ticketing currently a Christmas unit or a, uh, a um, Halloween unit and a th Valentine's unit, you don't have to worry about these things. Feel free to ticket. Um, but if you're going to take it a summer unit or a grand unit, I would recommend waiting to the very last day just to make it least likely that you get cucked by picking something that you may get a dupe of. Anyways, with this ranking, I'm going to be making it a lot shorter than the original idea I had for my Twitch video. If you didn't know, I did this all live on my Twitch channel at Twitch TV dash Science Trail. I it ended up being about four hours long. So I, I am going to still upload that in like a smaller segment. Uh, I'm going to cut it down as much as I can and then upload it. But this video is going to be a much, much shorter video. I'm only going to be looking at the top tier units that are worth ticketing. I will not be talking about every unit because some of them, they're garbage. So that's how I plan on doing it. I will be giving additional points to seasonal units over grands. This is very important because you can pick up a grand at any point during Legfest and Flash Gala, and th those are reoccurring events that come back every month. As for seasonal units, they don't come back nearly as much. Because of that, I do value them a little bit more personally. You may disagree with that, and I understand. But for me, I do value seasonal units more with the anniversary ticket. Therefore, I will be giving them bonus points because they're a seasonal unit. And keep in mind, there will be timestamps for each LE when I go through each. So just look in the description down below and you can just skip to what LE you're looking for. And with that, let's get started on the video. Now, before we get started, I actually forgot to mention that with this tier list, I'll only be looking at the highest tiers. I currently have the tier list structured in core as the highest tier. These units are the units you want to go after immediately. Tier one are your secondary pick. If you have the core units, these are the units you want to go after next. And tier two are units where you really want to optimize your element and you're looking to spread out your box a little bit more by having more options and mistakes are these units that are mistakes in the LE and you shouldn't waste this ticket on these units. However, feel free. If they're a white fool of yours, go ahead. At the end of the day, this game is a video game and you should be going for your enjoyment rather than trying to become a, a top 25 GBF player or anything like that, because generally your ping is going to be the biggest gate for you. So, it's not even worth a time trying to become a MLG Grand Blue Fantasy player. Now with that, we'll be looking at the first LE, which is Fire, currently probably the worst LE for the anniversary ticket because a lot of the current Fire units are all from 2018 and below, which is very unfortunate. Fire did not get any seasonal units for 2019. Funny enough, they did get a Grand unit though, which is Shiva, I believe at the very end well, I guess Shiva doesn't really count. He was released at 2018, December 31st. Depends on how you want to look at it. But uh, now, my opinions on fire units, you can see it generally low here. I do have Sturm and Ixaba as tier one, mainly because of how strong the Ixaba grid is in current fire meta. It does dominate a lot of things during strike time. Keep in mind, you do require strike time and Alanan, 
but that's only really two hours of gameplay, so it's up to you if you really want to push your fire grid to its maximum peak by investing into Exabas. I don't think it's the best thing to take it personally, as there's much better options than other LEs, but if you're a fire main and you really want to take your fire to the next level, I can fully understand you picking that up, and that's perfectly fine with me. But honestly, it's about as low as it's going to get with this LE system, so it shouldn't be this low for the other ones. Now we're on to the water element with our very first core unit, which is Water Kaliostro, Summer Kaliostro, whatever you want to call her. She is a monster, a very strong unit. When fully optimized, you can get tons of burst damage and quick Shiva burst. One thing I will mention with her is that she does have a major downside, which is that she does require a crest building mechanic or a crest building team so you can fully optimize her skill one, which does require five, uh, five crests, deluge crests to fully be maximized. Now, another thing about Kaliosha is that she's a very picky character where if you want to fully optimize her, you, do, you are recommended to run a critical grid being that her passive does give bonus damage to any one foe attacks that are critical. Her skill one does apply a bit of critical. However, on your downturns, you will not be critting nearly as much. So it is recommended to run a critical build. Luckily, Levive the Magna does have a critical build that will be getting a buff, hopefully, with the full limit break of the new tier one old olden primals. So look forward to that in about a month for less than a month i believe so that should help put Levived in build up there are currently many critical builds for varuna so you don't have to worry near, nearly as much they are free to play and pay to win options obviously pay to win is the superior option but it does require a couple more bars and investment now we're looking at tier one here and you could probably see that i do have Greya in tier one and two because Greya's um performance is solely based on her team when she's paired up with vajra and ponyto her her results are much higher than if you were to just run Greya on any standard team and i still feel vajra is probably one of the most desired units in the le not this desired units but very very uncommon units vajra was not on many banners so if you're ticketing Greya to save your water with Alvadra, you're going to find out that Greya is not going to be what really saves your Ellie with Alvadra. So just keep that in mind. If you're going for Greya, you need to have Vajra to perform even decently with her. Without Vajra, her performance is rather average at best. You do do decent damage on Ogi with main character, which is cool for like a one hit, but Generally, there's better options than other LEs if you're going to run Summer Greya. And the other unit we have here is Summer Sendafon. Sendafon is actually a stellar, a stellar unit. However, he's kind of held down solely by the fact that it's water and his damage is not the highest. He does require a rather decked out grid to fully maximize his damage as he doesn't have any insane modifiers on his himself unfortunately so he will hit rather low with a weak grid however if you have a fully decked out grid and you fully maximize your damage he can be the highest dps in the le but this does require quite a bit of investment not many people want to invest heavily into their water which i understand so keep in mind that sendafon is a god unit if fully optimized not to mention that he does stack really well with Kaliostro. I have a video on it. He performed great with her. Just you need to invest fully into the LD and that can be a heavy commitment for people who play water. But that's pretty much covers my water recommendations. Let's get on to the next LD. Okay, and now we are on to the earth element. And honestly, out of every element I've done so far, this will be the hardest as there's so many stellar units released. In the last six months that earth is just packed full of units you really want to pick up so i had to make some really harsh decisions here but i'm gonna try to give my general thoughts 
on every character here and why you should get them. Now, one thing I like to mention, if you guys are looking for Magnum builds, you can always go to DJ Salt. He has a ton of videos on all these characters. If you want to see them in Primal or Magnum builds, you can look there. Now, first character we're looking at is Summer Alex. And to be honest, she is about as core as core can get if the boss remotely even damages you. Not only that, she excels really well in pretty much any EX Plus setup, thanks to her Ogi effect giving her nuke at the end of turn. And she looks pretty! So it's like a it's like a triple wombo combo. You get a cute girl, she protects you, she gives you defense buffs that are permanent. Cannot be dispelled. Gravity. Her skill one is ridiculous. She does it all. She's an amazing unit. Now, people do have a problem with her because she does take the slot of Grand Alex. With comparing both units, she does provide less damage for the team. But what she brings in terms of utility is so drastic that it's generally just way better not to mention that as a standalone unit she does more damage than the normal variant so let's keep that in mind thanks to her nukes applying a lot she does do considerably more damage than the uh grand variants but you do need to have a more fleshed out pool to really acquire said damage so just keep that in mind next we are on to Vashiraga and zeta if you notice i put them in core and tier one, it really depends on what's in your character pool, what's in your box on how well the units perform. Currently, they are insane units providing 80% bonus damage, guaranteed triple, a ton of buffs on themselves at the cost of lower defense. But not only are they that insane, their skill is copyable by Kame, which makes not only them insane it turns your game into a monster keep in mind though that if you're doing this setup you would require came to be in the front row therefore you cannot kind of rely as much on a highlander grid to perform really well with these two characters you will need a more fleshed out pool to really maximize their potential without came though you still get a ton of good comps with them you can just run Mahira instead of came you do lose a little bit of bonus damage, but I think long term it, it equates to having more damage overall. I'm not too sure. I'm no earth expert, so just know that you don't need Kame, but they do perform really well with Kame if you have them. That's just how it goes right now. And now we're on to probably most players or majority of players number one pick for this anniversary ticket, Christmas Narmea. I mean, her skill three and her skill one combo is so ridiculous that it's sometimes I just get, I, I want to puke when I look at it, not to mention it's any time assassin, that's one turn, and when you combine it with tag team, Karen, it's all a bunch of shenanigans, it's, it's really, really disgusting, so it's something that I, I know a lot of players are really looking forward to picking up, and I don't blame you, it's a very strong combination, and it will be what pretty much carries Earth in the upcoming Guild Wars in about a month or two, depending on what, on you know how they do the schedule, but about two months at most to the next Earth Guild Wars. Now, you may notice I put one character here in Tier 1, who you can arguably make in core, which is Magisa. Magisa, she has a ton of utility. The spell, armor, mirrored image charge bar game for the team she done a ton of things my only real gripe with her is that currently in the game when it comes to mvp and things she's really not the mvp unit uh if you're talking about any content right now none of the content is she going to give you mvp rather she'll make your life easier for like full auto and, and things like that she'll make five really easy for you there's a lot of things she'll make easier for you but if you're talking about MVP, she's not really the best unit. You can use her in OTKs as well. Uh, one turn setup for like Europa and stuff like that, which most most people here are probably still farming Magnet too. So if you're getting her for that, that's not a bad option. But once you get to like the higher end, your, your grids are complete. She's not really going to be the unit that really gives you like MVP status. So 
Uh, still a solid pick overall. If you're not really a tryhard, she's probably the best option out of all the units here. Her or Summer Alex depends. Uh, but they're both very good options, so keep that in mind. Earth does have a dispeller problem. Right now, Earth doesn't have that many great dispellers. It's Magisa is the best dispeller in the element. So when you consider going towards Fa high level, you may want to just pick her up now if you don't have any dispeller for Earth. But that's pretty much my thoughts right now on the Earth element. Uh, there may be some more controversial things in the chat. Um, just leave it in the comments how you guys feel about it. But let's get on to the next element. Now we're on to everyone's favorite element in the game, the best free-to-play element, Wind. Now, Wind has currently no core characters in my opinion. They do have some two stellar units and the God tier unit being the $400 S tier SSS triple S triple quadruple S. John, Summer John is a stellar unit, game breaking even to this day in 2020. Her meta-defying skill set of having 25 defense down and 15 win defense down is still a stellar skill, even in 2020, almost game-breaking to this point. Not only that, she gives 10 charge bar. You ever been that moment where you had to be looking at Siete with 90% charge bar? Well, with Win John, you can use her skill 3 to give him 10 extra charge bar so he can ogi on that turn it's practically game breaking how powerful this skill is and i can't believe something like this is still on such a game breaking unit with no rebalance at all i practically it's a nerf at this point because it's just so broken not only that she has the powerful i mean extremely powerful 20 percent wind attack up to all allies and 20 percent wind damage reduction it's practically unfair how powerful she is, even in 2020. So, perfectly one of the best picks you can go for. I'm talking so much trash right now. I'm just trying to justify my bad purchase, guys. If you guys didn't know, it's a meme on my uh, stream that I, I spent $400 out of my pocket to get Summer John, because he's my waifu. And yeah, mistakes were made. They were made. But, back to the reality of things. Currently, Wen has no core units. Um, they do have two solid units, though. Medion and Cyril, or Christmas Veil, vale, whatever you want to call them. I don't care. Medion, he's uh, really good if optimally used. He does have a extremely high Ogi cap thanks to his passive skill. So he's really good for EX Plus builds and stuff like that. However... I don't have too much experience with him on Magna. I kind of haven't touched him on Magna. I've only really used him on Primal because I'm too in love with Monkey and Neo. So I don't know how to really give an opinion on him on Magna. I'm going to rely on you guys in chat to tell me how good he performs in Magna. I'm sorry. <laughs> As for Cyril, he does have one of the most unique passages in the game. Being that he gives Veil to all win allies at the start of battle. That Veil is practically broken. And if it allows you to have Veil in scenarios where you would not have Veil. Keep in mind when does have units like Grimnir. Who are very strong units. However, there are setups that do not involve Grimnir. So having that Veil can be crucial. Or they can completely dick you over with Dogu and have them just go right through Veil anyway, because F you, that's why. So, I mean, <laughs> it's really good, but <laughs> Saki's like, F you, dude. Dogu, what? Your Veil means nothing. <laughs> so, while I want to say it's really powerful, they just completely screwed us over with the last Guild Wars. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> What's the Veil when it, when it goes right through your Veil anyway? <laughs> so... This is something you got to keep in mind that they have pr proven that they don't give a F about Veil. While Veil is good, just go right through your Veil anyway. So That's pretty much sums up when though. Let's get on to the next Ellie. Now we're on to one of the top two elements in the game being Light. Yes, Light is one of the strongest elements in the game. Tokai, stop whining about how powerful your Ellie is because it's one of the best. Now... 
This element has one of the most unique characters in the game, in my opinion, thanks to her utility. So I had to classify her in her own tier, which is Blue Pot tier, looking at Charlotta. Now, she is a extremely unique unit as she gives a Blue Pot to your party at the start of the battle. This can apply to her if at the front row or the back row. Commonly used in setups such as Fa High Level, where you, what you have is Charlotte off element, be it in the start of your team, and she would die generally to bring in an Evoker. It's a very good combination, so you start off the battle with three blue pots and two green pots. This is very strong because generally in that content, you do have a ton of health, and when you activate a blue pot, you can be healing anywhere up to 10k, even higher to like 30 to 40k, depends on how high your health bar goes up to. Now, this is very, very powerful. So, I don't know if I want to call her core because of how unique this ability is. But in that very niche scenario, I think it's exceptionally well. But I don't want to tell people to just, you know, go after her. Because while it's very good, it's extremely niche. You do end up losing one teammate, which is rather big depending on your party comp and what element you're running. You may not be able to afford losing one teammate, but when she works, she really excels extremely well. Now we're on to the core units in the LE, which will be Hal Senna and Hal and Mal. We'll start off with Hal Senna because I find her to be a little bit more important as the way she synergizes with the element in the current meta racing builds. She has more impact currently than Hal and Mal, mainly due to two important things. Hal Senna's biggest thing is that she's a draft element, a female draft, and because of that, she really combines well with the Aphrodite summon. If you didn't know, Aphrodite is a summon where it gives you the same effect as Kirin, but the only the thing is that you need to have the boss have Ogi three times to acquire this effect and it will reset your skills on the next activation. This is very powerful because you can combine it with setups with tag team, abusing John's anytime assassin skill. And what really makes Talon Senna exceptionally well is that she does guarantee your triple attack with her skill three. You're probably wondering why that is important when John can guarantee your triple attack after she ogies. What makes it so strong is that because you don't need to ogie to get your triple attack, you can instantly fire off it faster than if you had ogie. If you didn't know, there's a lockout in this game. So generally, ogies are frowned upon because they take longer for your turn to process and it makes your overall setup slower if you have to rely on Ogi. How Senna does not need to rely on Ogi, which is a really big thing. Not only that, she does have supplemental damage on that skill, which combines very well with John, and she does support her own 80% bonus damage via her skill two, and stackable attack and defense down from her skill one. Makes her a very, very strong unit and very core in a lot of setups. Now, the reason I put her a little bit below Hal and Mal, we'll talk about it when we talk to Hal and Mal, which is right now. The reason she's a little, Hal and Mal is an extremely good unit, but the reason she's below Hal Senna, in my opinion, a little bit is because she's a primal unit and Lucio is also in the Ellie. Lucio is a very, very strong unit and very great for bursting as well. So you can kind of make a way by just running Lucio instead of Hal and Mal if you don't have Hal and Mal. However, Hal and Mal is a stellar unit because she's extremely strong. She has one of the best skill twos in the game that gives not only bonus damage, it gives a lot of attack up, dark damage reduction, and it gives crest to all allies. And her crest effect is probably one of the best in the game as it gives supplemental damage to all allies based on your crest. This applies to her being in the front row or the back row, which is very, very strong. Not only that, she does have the niche ability to do 2 million plane, which does help in content like Fa High Level for the 7th labor. 
So she does quite a bit in her kit. She does have very high dodge rate via her skill three and shield. However, shield not nearly as important if you're playing this in Zeus Primal because your Primal Summon gives you a 3k Parma Shield. Her shield is only, I believe, 2k or 1.5, so it's not nearly on the same level. But nonetheless, it's still rather strong. Next, we're on to our tier one units, which are Lucio and Melissa Bella. We're gonna start off with Melissa Bella as I feel she to be a little bit more important because she is a seasonal unit. Melissa Bella is a stellar unit with her recent rebalance we got in January, becoming the best dispeller in the light element. No, it's a good dispeller, but nothing compares to Melissa Bella and her get over here combination, especially when you combine it with units like Noah, who can give her reactivation to keep spamming her Ogi, which then after spamming it three times or combining it with her skill two to get Chuck chocolate, she can activate a 20 hit massive skill damage at the end of the turn and heal herself from it. This is a very, very powerful skill and she does have some insane damage per turn if utilized properly. However, she is still, at the end of the day, a Ogi character, so she will not ever become a meta character thanks to John. but she's still a strong unit for solo content, probably being the best option now for people who want to solo Fa high level without Geis and Borger. So, very, very good unit. Now we're on to Lucio, and to be honest, Lucio is kind of just a great unit overall, having a stamina buff on his skill one, shield, revitalize, he does a ton. Not only that, he does have guaranteed TA with tons of bonus damage from his passive and skill three. However, he does have some time and some problem with building up his stats quickly. In short content, he will take a little bit of a damage hit because he does not get his full passive effect when he needs to have six wings on him to truly maximize his damage. But nonetheless, he is a strong attacker. Not only that, he comes with one of the best light weapons in the game being an Eden, which is always a good weapon, even in one copy, two copy, three copies, all the way up to six. It's still viably used right now in light builds for either Grand Order or Bahamut High Level. So it's very, very strong and you will not be going wrong if you picked Lucio. But that's it for the second best LE. Now we're on to number one. Okay guys, it's now time for the number one element in the game, which is the dark element. Yes, you may notice the tier list. I did add another tier for dark specifically because I had a really hard time placing this one character in a tier. So I had to make an extra one just for her. But let's get started. Right now for dark, the core is Zooey or Zoe, whatever you want to call her. Zoe 101 or Zooey for the Japanese pronunciation. Um, people had to school me on that on my stream. Now, Zoe is extremely strong. She's almost absurd in so many Amity setups, off Ellie, on Ellie, it don't matter, it's Zoe. Not only can you just def her out the party as well, she does so much for Dark, and in combination with certain characters like Nier, it just gets absolutely freaking Bonkers, man. If you're playing Dark without Zoe, I don't know what you're doing in this game. Honestly, see your key to progression. If you didn't know, there's a guy on Twitch um, streaming rank one all the way to end game with a fresh, brand new account being practically carried by Zoe, um, Grand Blue Fantasy Enfi. I think his Twitch is called right now, or GBF Enfi. So. You guys can give him a look, but Zoe is core as core can get. She is the strongest unit. If you do not have Zoe, please just pick up Zoe. She's a stellar unit. Or Sparker, just do something. Get Zoe, man. Now we're on to the special tier, which is 0 0.5, Claris. Valentine's Claris was people's number one go-to pick the moment Fa came out and they realized you kind of required her for Fa early on. Not only does she have one of the rare 2 million plane damage mechanics with her skill 3, she provides a ton of utility with her skill 1, 
her passive skill, her skill two, her Ogi. She does it all. She has delay. She got charge bar gain, a very unique passive where she gives your main character 20% charge bar speed increase. People don't keep that in mind, but you do get a charge bar speed increase thanks to Claris. Not only that, she gives an attack to all allies based on their turns. She gives the mirror image, armored, veil, practically cleans your, she cleans your laundry, she does it all, man. It's a great unit. But the reason she could not be core is because currently in Dark, there's no setup where she is required solo Fa High level, not a requirement. Uh, Fa High level in general, not a requirement. Even her two male plane damage can be mimicked via Vikala and Michael, Vikala and Fairy, Fairy and Michael. You do have ways to copy it. Uh, her Ogi is the only thing that is truly unique to her in that she gives 30% charge bar to all allies, making her the optimal unit for EX plus setups. However, you do require a really decked out grid to hit the 21 million via this four characters and only using her skill too. So while she is the optimal unit for it, it's a very hard setup to do without a lot of fault and swords. So keep that in mind. But truly though, she is a stellar unit and don't feel bad if you pick her. She's great and a great addition to your dark lineup. Now we're on to the horny character. This character is Anthra, whatever her name is. She is extremely strong. However, she does based around the dodge mechanic. Luckily though, Dark has seen a ton of upgrades to their dodge system in terms of Vikala and Ray. She is a optimal unit to actually use skill two with Ray so that she can dodge more often and heal your team up in harder content. While Ray defense down won't really affect her because she does give permanent defense via her ardent dance. So even though she will have lower defense, it's not going to affect her too much. And she does have guaranteed dodge when you really need to dodge on her. So she's really strong. She's been used in a lot of set setups in dark from full auto, Yubaha high level, the very first Fa Solo used this unit, and many other Fa Solos used her as well. She does also kill clarity on her passive. She not only heals, she clears too. It's a very good combination, making her extremely strong to go after. But those are the top picks, in my opinion, right now for every Ellie. Leave in the comments what characters you picked. What characters do you think about picking? If you need help, just leave it in the comments and I'll try to reply to you. I know I'm late. I know a lot of you guys have already picked your unit and stuff, and I understand. I'm sorry about it. But I really felt that, you know, I shouldn't have dropped the video super Ill early or anything. So just tell me how you guys picked and what you're planning on doing right now. As for me, I'm probably going to end up picking a weapon, actually, or a, a summon because... I don't really need any character on one of my accounts and the other account I'm picking Narmea. So that's about how I'm going. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Till then. Goodbye.